<laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to my basement where I am streaming live. <laughs> I'm Carrie Petrie, and I am the director of project management at uh, Data Marketing. And uh, welcome, Bonnie is here with me today. Uh, so she is with Wax Marketing, and I will let Bonnie introduce herself in a minute. Um, so we are doing these weekly webinars um, addressing a number of different topics that we know that our clients have been uh, dealing with in, in this new reality of COVID-19. Um, so today we wanted to talk about messaging. Um, so Bonnie, why don't you do a little introduction of yourself, tell us who you are and, and uh, some of your experience in the industry. Sure. I founded Wax Marketing in 2002. We're an integrated marketing communications agency that works with nonprofits and small to medium sized businesses primarily. Before that, I worked in the technology industry for several years. So when I got into marketing, it was right when technology and marketing were converging. And, and of course, the messaging channels were proliferating. So what we do at Wax is we work with companies, try to help them hone their message, find the audience in the correct channels, and then translate those messages correctly for whatever channel they're sending it out on and to whatever audience. And, you know, as you know, because we've worked together on some projects, it's, it's, it's not always an easy task. And today, with everything that's going on, it's, it's gotten even harder. So I'm really, really glad to have this op opportunity to kind of talk about it and, and maybe give some people some helpful advice. Yeah, well, we appreciate it for sure. Um, so my background is before I was at Data, I was a newspaper reporter for 10 years at uh, the St. Cloud Times here in central Minnesota. So uh, we thought it'd be great to just talk about media and talk about messaging and uh, the right way to uh, communicate with your audiences during this time. Um, so I thought I would just step back into my old shoes as the interviewer and just ask you a few questions. Absolutely. And awesome. Fire away. Awesome. Um, I think the biggest thing that I've been hearing from clients is talking about, um, promotions and, you know, some businesses are really busy right now and some, obviously it's, it's come just to a dead stop. So what do you think about promotion promotions at this time? Is that an appropriate thing to do? How can you do it the right way, the wrong way? I think you really hit the nail on the head in that some businesses are so busy they can't even think about it. Mm -hmm. And others are just struggling to survive or they may have even closed because yeah. they're not an essential service as we know here in Minnesota. So I think the idea is not to think about whether you should promote, but how you should promote. And I, I saw a headline on Women's Wear Daily that I thought was really really appropriate. It said, think about social selling versus push marketing right now. And I thought that was a really great way of saying it. Mm -hmm. And I think they also said lead with humanity, which mm -hmm. I loved yeah. that. And I wish I had written that myself because I think <laughs> right now we have to look at everything we do and every message we write with a particular lens. And that lens needs to be that a reader may have someone, a loved one sick with with COVID. Mm -hmm. And when you think about that, it makes it, it, it makes it harder, but it also kind of means that we have a lot of responsibility as marketers to be, to be empathetic, to have a lot of empathy in what we're doing and to think about how we can contribute to the greater good. And, mm -hmm. you know, I've been, this is my fourth recession and that's how old I am. <laughs> um, and I think the thing that car has carried through companies when I think about 2008 or the IT crash in 2002, which is when I came out of technology or even the early nineties when I did my first startup, the ones that really survived were the ones that sort of had a, had a broader sense and thought about their brand purpose when they were mm -hmm. doing this rather than just, can I sell something today? Yeah. So that's kind of how I look at it in a lot of different ways, but really thinking about how can you contribute because yeah. if you contribute, I, I think you're going to add to your brand mm -hmm. um, in the long run. I mean, you guys are kind of the branding marketing gurus. So I, mm -hmm. I think you would agree with that or 
Yes. No, I love that. I love lead with humanity. I love that's right? a great line. <laughs> yeah. I know. I just saw that before this and I thought I'm going to, I'm going to leave with that. I like it. I like it. Uh, is there any examples you can give us of maybe a national brand that you've seen do something really good during this time that we can draw inspiration from? Well, I think that, I think that a lot of the things that we're seeing are not necessarily marketing driven. Mm -hmm. When you look at um, certain CEOs who are donating their salaries, for example, or if you look at 3M here in Minneapolis or in Minnesota that has changed just about everything that it's done. I mean, it's wartime now, but before that, I mean, they were retooling to do more masks mm -hmm. a month ago. So a lot of it, I think, is really driven more by need and by this really authentic desire to help. And yeah. those are the things that I see. I mean, one of the small companies that I saw is this company in um, LA and it's a cream shop and literally they sell like skin creams and things, mm -hmm. but for every cream that they sell, they're donating and they're buying and donating masks and sending them to healthcare workers or for example, Topper's Pizza. I don't know if you have those guys mm -hmm. up in St. Cloud, but they're delivering pizzas for free to a lot of the hospital providers here in town and just delivering them every day. Yeah. And I don't think that's because they want to improve their brand. I just think that a lot of these companies look at what can I actually do to help? Mm -hmm. And it's authentic. And as a result, it helps their brand as well. Uh, Patagonia is another company that is trying to use some of its distribution capabilities to help with, you know, a lot of the problems that we have with PPE now are all about distribution and they're trying to lend their distribution, the trucks and things like that to help deliver some of the masks and the gowns and, and things of that nature. Um, so I'm, I'm seeing a lot of that type of thing where it's really the owner or the brand itself just wants to, they want to contribute. Yeah. Yeah. And how important is it to see these messages coming from the very top, seeing the CEOs, you know, is it really important that these individuals step up and really show their faces, so to speak? It depends on the CEO. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think that, uh, you know, there's, it's never a good idea if you're a small business or a, or a big business, you know, if you're publicly held, you have no choice and hopefully you've hired a CEO that is you know, worthy of being in the public eye. But right. for a lot of businesses, I think that's a question that the owners always have. And if, if someone's not comfortable with that, it's not a good thing to do. But there's usually someone in the company that is. The other mm -hmm. thing that is really, really um, resonating is, is what is, has always been true since we kind of moved to this more social media type of world in that it's about the stories and the human interest stories that we want to hear. So, and that's not necessarily the guy or gal that's leading the organization. organization. It's often, you know, somebody that's on the front lines or that pizza delivery person or, um, you know, that human that was helped by the brand. So I think it's more about telling those stories, particularly if you have a shy business owner or it just doesn't fit. Don't, I would never try to make someone do that if it wasn't going to be authentic. Sure. Sure. Have you seen any, and you don't have to name names, but any bad examples of? I've seen a lot of bad examples and most of them are on LinkedIn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, for those of us in B2B, if yeah. I get one more lead gen ad yeah. or private message on LinkedIn, I mean, I just, I think it's egregious. I really do. Okay. So I think there are there are some desperate measures that you see digital marketing companies doing. Mm -hmm. They're upping their frequency, which is the last thing that you should do. They're sending emails that you can tell some copywriter was told, make this heartfelt, but yeah. sell something at the same time. And yeah. that just doesn't work. So, you know, I think, I think everybody's being really sensitive. I'm sure that the, that the blog posts of like worst, pandemic marketing tactics ever will come out at some point yes. yep. but I you know I haven't seen them yet I you know if you go on Twitter you'll you'll see people making fun of, of things a lot but yeah. I really haven't seen anything really really bad except for that kind of 
outbound stuff that's coming in. You know, my, I don't know about you, but my phone started blowing up again with the healthcare insurance companies. Telemarketing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like already serious. Yeah. And it's kind of, um, not very sensitive. Yeah. Doing that right now. So I would say some of those, those aggregators of health insurance companies are really probably the ones that I see that I, I think are doing, well, not yeah. doing a good job. Yeah. Of that. Okay. Well, that kind of leads into my next question about um, communication tactics. If there are certain tactics that you should really avoid right now um, that you might often use before all of this. And you, you talked about the LinkedIn direct mail stuff. Are there, are there other things that you're seeing? I think if we go back to talking about outbound marketing and push marketing, mm -hmm. email right now is something that our crisis is sort of, I mean, when you think about, I, I've done a lot of crisis communications as well. And the interesting thing about things right now is that everyone's in crisis. If you think about every brand, we're experiencing a crisis, mm -hmm. whether it's, as you were saying, too much work or we're closed or there's not enough work mm -hmm. or we're having to kind of digitize the operation. I know a trucking company that, that went, had to go digital in a week, yeah. that their plan was two years long to get these yeah. truckers on apps, you know, yes. think about that. Yep. So it's really important to use the big gun stuff very sparing, sparingly. And to me, for a lot of smaller businesses, that's email. Yeah. We're getting inundated with emails right now. And they're all using, we were joking about the, about the ubiquitous terms we're hearing now in these uncertain times. <laughs> I'm just going to say flat out, don't ever use that ever, ever in any of your messaging. No, no. Unprecedented. We say take a drink every time someone says that. <laughs> right. But uncertain times is the one I see. I mean, there's a lot, there are a lot of things that mean nothing because everyone's saying them. Drop the yeah. word pandemic. Mm -hmm. from your lexicon. And just, if you have something to offer that's a value for your audience, send them a message, be authentic. And I think today also be mm -hmm. short and don't, as a journalist, you like this, don't yeah. bury the lead. That's right. Get yeah. to the point right away in those yeah. things if you have to do something. But I really think going back to the best channels right now are really kind of the social channels and seeing just this huge resurgence in Twitter. So if people yeah. aren't on Twitter, get back on there, particularly if you're thinking about trying to get a media story. And I know you have questions about that too. We can mm -hmm. talk about that in a minute. Mm -hmm. Facebook is, is showing tons and tons of, yeah. of activity that it hasn't had. And things like IGTV on Instagram are really, yeah. really booming. The other one that people forget about all the time, and this is an important one for companies that maybe are science-based or they have a lot of expertise in a deep area um, is Reddit. Mm -hmm. And Reddit also has gotten really, really busy again. And that's sort of a place where if you have a lot of thought leadership and expertise, particularly in the sciences, chemistry, mm -hmm. um, things like that, Reddit's a great place mm -hmm. to be. So I would say Try to look social. Don't be pushing out a lot of stuff. Um, be building your content on your website, and your blog and things like that. But also it's a time to test channels that maybe you've already always thought, boy, I wish we were on Instagram because we have a great visual element. It's a good time to jump in. People's yeah. reach is expanding if they're doing yeah. good posting. And I'm sure you're seeing that for your clients as well. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we play a lot in the digital advertising space. And I know with Facebook that, um, like you were saying, the users are so huge right now. Everybody's using Facebook now more than they probably did before because they're sitting at home and have the time to scroll through. But advertisers have been pulling back. Um, so we're seeing costs really go down there. So there's a lot of opportunity for businesses with some good messaging to, to mm -hmm. get in front. Okay, there. What value can you provide? Yeah. I, yeah. I always tell people to think about that versus what can you sell them? Mm. You know, what value can you provide right now? And it might not be anything that's revenue generating. Yeah. But the, for example, the restaurants that I've seen that maybe they're doing takeout and they don't have in-house, but they're posting recipes that are easy to make at home. Yeah. I've seen quite a few here in, in St. Paul that are actually giving the recipes from their menus. Yeah. And 
I think that's fabulous. Mm -hmm. And it's a kind of a no fear strategy. And people remember that. Yeah. Yeah. That's you know? uh, my husband's a chef and he was saying that he thinks that what restaurants should be doing is maybe um, you'd make the take, take stuff home to make it and then have the chefs do like a Facebook live showing how to make the recipe. And yeah. Stuff. All of that is great. Like that. Yeah. Cause ours that. will never taste as good. Maybe yours will cause your husband, but mine <laughs> will never ever taste as good. And so I will definitely go back and, right. and try to eat it at a restaurant and see what it actually was supposed to take like, <laughs> taste like when I'm, when I'm done. I mean, I can, this is, you know, quarantine is very hard for those of us who are kitchen challenged. Let me yeah. just <laughs> Maybe I have someone to help me out with that. Yeah, I know. Otherwise, it's ramen noodles and chili. <laughs> um, well, let's talk a little bit about messaging and how can we um, put our messaging together in a way that doesn't come across as smarmy or, you know, that feels genuine. Do you have any tips on that? How to keep that genuineness, I guess? I don't know. I think right now, the call to action percentage should be a lot lower. Okay. And so it's not necessarily the language, because I think if you try to switch up your language all of a sudden to something that's like meaningful or right. something that doesn't sound like your brand, mm -hmm. it's not going to resonate. Mm -hmm. But the ones that I've seen that are the best are the ones that really seem to be very simple and very authentic. Yeah. And here's how we're helping. Here's how you can help us. Here are things that we have that might help with you, you know, where you might be looking for this, something like that. I mean, I saw an ad today for best leggings to wear when working from home. And then it was, it was really clever, but it wasn't salesy at all. It was just kind of like, you know, should you, do you need the pockets when you're sitting? Cause you never really do put your phone in your pocket. I mean, it was really cute. Yeah. And some tips on, um, you know, how to look great from the waist up but really comfortable in <laughs> leggings. And I thought, I read it. You yeah. Know, I see in tons of these things all day long that you like you, you know, it flies across my screen and that yeah. one got my attention. And I thought, cause they were, they were saying, you know, it's really kind of depressing right now. So here are these really, here are our wildest themed leggings. And I was like, this is great. Yeah. You know? So being creative about things like that and thinking with, through that lens of not only, um, they, a loved, a loved one might be sick, which is the most important. But the second one is that, you know, we need emotional support too, mm -hmm. and we need humor and we need things that lighten our day. And frankly, these authentic heartfelt, we're there for you. I mean, it drags me down. I don't know about you. Yeah. I would rather see a snappy, I, I have a, a grocery store client and, and the CEO kind of wrote this letter. So it was a fake letter sort of yelling at her, at her customers for, for hoarding toilet paper. And it was really funny. And she <laughs> could deliver that line because that's how she is in real yeah. life. But I mean, that meant more to me than, than another one that I got from another grocery store that was yeah. just talking about we are going to keep you healthy and we're sanitizing and I mean obviously they're all doing that right right you know don't so um those kinds of things are like I said things that have empathy but also realize that we want our mood lightened right now oh Marketing yeah it's aspirational and right now we all need a good laugh we need to chuckle a little bit that's yeah. my favorite thing that I've seen is uh Duluth trading company had um one for men's underwear and it said feeling cooped up and it was for men's underwear. Yeah. And I mean, that's so for them. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. 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 Right. And that's their, their brand is always very cheeky and funny. And so mm -hmm. it, it was right on brand for them. And I keep using it as my example with people. Cause I thought it was, so funny. it, it was is. That's a great one. I hadn't seen that, but I like that one too. And I'll steal yeah. it for next time. <laughs> Um, well, good. Well, let's talk a little bit about um, earned media during this time, because I know um, I just had a conversation with a client today who was uh, talking about, um, you know, getting the local newspaper out there for, for things that they've been doing. Uh, what are some of your tips? If you think that you have a really great story that, about your business and what your business is doing, how do you get that out there? How do you get people's attention to that? Well, I think the important thing to remember is that the media environment right now isn't is unique. 
Mm-hmm. So the number one story is the virus. Mm-hmm. And if someone has a virus related story with human interest, yes, that will probably get attention. Mm-hmm. If they don't, they probably won't get attention with any kind of inbound email. So whereas before we could pitch reporters right now, it's almost impossible to do that just via email or phone like we normally would, because not only are they all incredibly busy, but a lot of them are usually work beats and you know what a beat is like the environmental beat or the business beat, but they've been pulled off Mm -hmm. to either work something that's related to the current crisis or like the political cartoonist at the Sacramento Bee is now writing sports. Wow. Because the sports writer is more experienced in writing and is doing virus stories. So you can't really rely that they're, that they're writing the same thing. Mm -hmm. So if you can't reach out to them proactively, what's really good is that I don't know if you have been on helpareporter.com. It's also called Harrow. And so we have a list and this is a free feed. You can go to helpareporter.com. You can sign up and you get four feeds a day of writers and journalists looking for stories. And one of the things is you might say, well, I'm in St. Cloud. So this is a national story. It doesn't relate. But the thing about earned media today is that it's not just getting that one placement. It's how much you um, amplify that placement among your own channels. So if you get something with a blog post that normally right now wouldn't be, wouldn't be as direct or drive somebody geographically to you, it's a little bit more important than it might have been free virus. So mm-hmm. I, I always tell people watch those because the journalists are so busy, they're really loading those feeds up. And that one is a free one that anybody can get. Mm-hmm. You just have to be very specific when you pitch say what you're doing in the very first line, Mm -hmm. don't bury the lead, don't put an introduction to your company, nothing. The other thing about earned media that has held true always and is that they're not interested in your business. They're not interested in what you sell. They're not interested in anything of that. What they're interested in is if there's a story that has an angle that will be of interest to their readers. And so what that means is you really have to think like a journalist and think, is there a human interest story in what's going on here? You know, maybe you're partnered with a nonprofit and that nonprofit is doing something for seniors and isolated seniors in residence homes. Mm-hmm. You know, what have you seen that, what kind of stories do you see in the paper, in on blogs all over that are related to your business and relevant that you could maybe pitch something similar or um, create kind of a blog post about it or something like that. So, I think that's where people get really, really um, a little bit, not desperate, but a little bit anxious is they're really trying to sell their business to a writer and that just doesn't ever work. And today it doesn't work at all. Mm -hmm. The other thing I'm going to go back to Twitter is that many journalists are on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And if you follow them on Twitter, if you engage with them on Twitter, if you know who the writers are, even if you have five followers on Twitter and you just got on, it doesn't really matter because mm-hmm. you might be tweeting a story, retweeting a story of theirs. They might just notice who you are. I mean, I've known a lot of companies that have gotten stories that way. Sure. Um, mm-hmm. We had one, so there's a nonprofit here in Minneapolis that I work with called Bail Place, which is a you know, they, they have clubhouses and these are places that where adults with serious mental illness go on a daily basis. They get, you know, they get help for getting jobs, but they actually gain a community. I mean, it's a very high touch environment that just lost any kind of touch very quickly. So their IT company took them virtual in about two weeks. Wow. Yeah. And if you think a lot of, a lot of their population is not as, as tech savvy, you know, a little bit older and that's, that's a great story that a reporter picked up on because the veil place posted a graph that said that showed their microsoft teams usage that went from like nothing to sky high in about Mm. five days yeah and so those are the kinds of things that you gotta you know you you kind of attract it at this time rather than really trying to push it Mm -hmm. um but finding those angles that are human interests that are stories that maybe relate kind of to the current crisis in a way that's complementary to your business. Those are the things to think about. And you'll find a lot of journalists are 
very kind when you reach out to them. And if it's not a good angle, they'll think of you next time. Yeah. There are quite a few journalists on Facebook right now that are also looking for stories and they'll put that out, you know, Hey, if you've got anything like this, I'm looking for it now. Mm -hmm. So being active on Facebook as an individual and maybe finding those people, like if you were still at St. Cloud times, you know, yeah. I would follow you on Twitter, I would follow you on Facebook mm -hmm. if I could. And, um, see what I could see what you were writing about and, and really have that. It's the same opinion as your brand. You need to think about how can you help this journalist do their job better? Yeah. And if you yeah. go it with that mindset yep. you can go in and give them the worst story idea on the planet and they'll still be kind and helpful because they'll see, you know, you understand what your job is. It's not yep. to sell to them. Yeah. No, I like that a lot. Cause especially in the current state of journalism, I mean, they're doing so much, and right. especially when you're dealing with this major story like this, if you approach them, um, here's how I can help you, or here's something that might be of interest to you. Mm -hmm. Here's um, an expert that knows a lot about yeah. nursing home sanitation, for example. I mean, I yeah. just made that up, but <laughs> if I owned cleaning products, I could, a cleaning product company, I could probably think of about a million angles. Sure. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. No, that's a really great tip. I like that. Um, good. Well, what about, um, going to that thought leadership, if you are someone where you're like, I might be able to contribute something to this conversation mm -hmm. because this is going into my area. Uh, what are your, what's your advice to, to those individuals? Well, I think that the, the very, the, the opportunity that we all have right now is to do something that's called rapid adaptation. Mm -hmm. So if you've been thinking about writing a blog for a long time and you are one of those companies that maybe doesn't have as much business as you'd like, mm -hmm. this is the time to do that. And thought leadership really starts with what we call earned, you know, owned media, sorry, not earned, earned media being used to be public relations, owned media being everything that you have control over, your, so, your own social media, your blog, your website, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And so that's where thought leadership usually starts mm -hmm. is with carefully crafted, authentic pieces. Um, I'll give you an example. So there's a nonprofit that I work with here in town called ICSI and they're, they work with providers and, and plans, healthcare providers and plans. And they normally work with them to do things like create new standards for post-operative opioid prescription. And then they'll roll that out to almost every provider and plan is in this group, but they'll have working groups of surgeons working on those things. Their executive directors have been, been very shy about doing her own writing and thought leadership. But mm -hmm. as someone who's worked very closely with Minnesota Department of Health and done some other things, I mean, her voice is really re relevant right now. Mm -hmm. And um, we wrote that piece together. I mean, that's the thing. I think people have a hard time, especially if it's a CEO or the owner of a business, kind of crafting something from scratch. Mm -hmm. And if you can get a helper who's has a knack for writing that can do an interview and maybe get a draft to them, even if they completely destroy it and rewrite it, it's mm -hmm. so much faster process, but yeah. writing your own things and putting them on the site or using something like medium, mm -hmm. you know, if you know medium, it's sort of a collaborative blogging tool. That's very good. Um, if you don't have your own blog and posting that on social and getting that out, those are also links you can send to a journalist and say, mm -hmm. I have a lot of thoughts about, for example, using organic cleaning products and whether or not they can help clean viruses too. And, mm -hmm. and hopefully you'll be like a credible science-based science -based person and you can try and go and do it as a non-science-based person, but um, depending on the outlet, they might like it. But <laughs> that's the type of email or tweet that you would send mm -hmm. you know, to, to a journalist and say, let me know if you're ever looking for sources for stories on this, because I, I will be there. And then if they call, call them back right away, drop whatever <laughs> call you're on and call them back right away. If you wait five minutes right now, you will lose a story. Yeah. That is how fast it's going. You cannot ever, it's not, if it's six o'clock, pick up the phone. If you really want to get this stuff done and get them whatever they need, make it your top priority or you will not get in that story. That's yeah. how, I mean, it always goes that fast, but right now it's at lightning speed. Deadlines are constant, so... Yeah, we're on a 24-7 news cycle and 
these, like you said, they're all working mm -hmm. three jobs. I mean, I, I, a Star Tribune reporter who's on the manufacturing beat and has been on that beat for a really long time. She used to be responsible for three to four stories a week, print stories. Mm -hmm. Well, now on top of that, she's writing three blogs a day. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 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 Which gives us a huge opportunity to pitch stories because she's got like 12 yeah. a week now versus three. Yeah. But it also kind of speaks to. But the other thing that's interesting is uh, there was a survey that Cision, that the, the media company did last year. And they, they interviewed journalists about how they were being contacted. Mm -hmm. And the majority of them said they got three to 400 emails a day, but they also said they got less than five phone calls. Oh, interesting. Okay. So if you really think you have a great story, yeah, it's still okay to pick up the phone and leave a message or call and say, and if the reporter says I'm on a deadline, just hang up the call and back. And just yeah. say very quickly, write your script out of exactly what you want to say. Don't bury the lead and say, I have a story idea for you. I'm an expert in this. Do you need that for any stories coming up? Or I have a story about how we worked with this nursing home to mm -hmm. bring puppies to the, I just saw the story. They brought this rescue, brought puppies in this, in, in big crates to the windows of the nursing home people so they could see the puppies. And then they just kind of walked up and down with the puppies. I mean, all these puppies were available for adoption. How clever is that, right? Oh, that's super Video smart. went all over the place yeah. and it was such a good idea, but they really did it with a, you know, with a good heart and, yeah. and that intent. I think yeah. we're all also going to try to figure out what the right term is for going viral because we're not going to be able to use that in marketing anymore. <laughs> I haven't thought about that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So that's not a term I use anymore. I'm just like, you know, we're going to have to think of one. Maybe you can coin that. You're the you're the wordsmith, Carrie. So yeah, I'll leave that I'll up think to you. on that one a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Right. Well, Bonnie, I want to be respectful of your time. I said I'd take a half hour of it, okay. but I really, really appreciate you taking the time to, to it's chat. It's been with. super fun. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah. Do you have any closing thoughts, anything that you think business owners should really be paying attention to right now? Well, I think they should be paying attention to your resources and the webinars that you're doing every week, because I think it's, it's, it's a great example of how you're trying to help people mm -hmm. at this time. Um, if anybody has any questions, you know, they can reach me. My website's waxmarketing.com. You can tweet at me at waxgirl333 um, or just waxmarketing at Gmail to reach me. I'm happy to answer any questions that come in. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. I, I always love talking to you. So I appreciate your time. You bet. All right. Well, you have a good one. Stay healthy. Thanks. Get outside. You thank you. Get outside. It's a beautiful day. I will. Get it out <laughs> there now. All right. Bye -bye. Thanks, Bonnie. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>